Ladies and gentlemen, it's amazing how much we know about the surface of our globe. In the last hundred years, men have progressively studied this. Explorations have reached the North, the South Pole. There are really relatively only a few square miles left of the surface of our globe that are not known. During the same years, men have reached out into the stars. Three times further in your lifetime and mine, three times further into space than men have ever been able to go before. Amazing knowledge we have of that and of this. What's inside this globe? What is there beneath our feet as we stand on the Earth? No one knows, of course. And science ponders about it, and all men are curious, but no one knows. Primitive man going into caves, reaching back and back and down and down, wondered what lay beyond. And in terror, he fled out. And he remembered strange sighs and noises. Now you go back to Mesopotamia, in the beginning of Western civilization, and you have the great hero Gilgamesh going down into the underworld. And so too with the Greeks, all down through time. Religions of the past have postulated the existence of this inner habitable world. All through the Middle Ages, people believed of something under the surface. Dante, the great Dante, saw a great cone-like cavity stretching down to the very center of the earth. There's nothing new about this. It's as old as man, this belief that under the surface, there may be areas inhabitable by man. And in our time, and in the last hundred years, there have been a number of theories, very curious and strange theories, about what goes on in the center of our planet. This is a very famous and interesting and odd one. A soldier, rather a minor hero, the War of 1812, was a man named John Cleve Sims. And he had a sudden idea that inside our world, like onion layers, there were globes within globes, five of them, some of them inhabited, and that if you were to travel up through the icy wastes of our world, the northwest edge of Siberia, you could go down through a hole and go successively to these various spheres. Unfortunately, he was thoroughly obsessed with this, went around lecturing, and in fatigue, died before he could make this experiment. Now, here's another theory much closer to us. This is 1870, about. A young American physician named Cyrus Reed Teed had a revelation. We are not living on the outside of the globe, said Teed, but on the inside. That when we think we're looking out, at the sun, we're really looking in at the sun. Strange, strange, questing mind of man that tries to find answers to things that he can't understand. This was a theory by Karl Neupert in Germany in the 1920s. He again imagined that we're living on the inside rather than the outside of the globe. And here's a real sun and a real moon, and then a rather shadowy and formless mass of electric potentiality with little bright sparks in it, and they give us the sense of our stars. And so in this picture you're about to see, you'll see the culmination of a long series of such desires to look into the Earth. One might well believe philosophically that some ancient culture, engulfed by a great and tremendous upheaval of nature, might linger on in some pocket of Earth. This is science fiction, of course. It's a fiction. It's a fable beyond fiction. For I think if you'll study this picture and think about it when it's over, you'll realize that this is something more than just a story told. It's a fable with a meaning and a significance for you and for me in the 20th century. Thank you and goodbye.